Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Amidst the chaos of a chaotic retail environment where demanding customers reign supreme and exhausted employees desperately seek respite, our OP, who specializes in disguises, encounters someone particularly dreaded, a familiar face from the infamous Fail Mart store known for its unfortunate reputation. But before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button, smash the like if you enjoy the content, and ring that notification bell so you never miss a juicy story. Entitled Woman That I Broke With A Song And Dance It's been a while since I've been mistaken for working at another market. For a while, it seemed every other month I'd be in a store shopping comfortably and someone would come out of the woodwork and demand help, recognizing me from Fail Mart. But with the COVID-19 crisis and the institution of masks, I've been happily incognito whenever I've gone in search of better prices and selection from the cult of Sam. At Failmart, I moved to another position from the pharmacy and now work the door handing out masks and wiping down carts. It's a terrible job, but I'm making more money doing this than any other job, so figure that one out. I've also changed my look. I'm no longer a rock and roll Yeti with long hair and band t-shirts, but dress more like a respectable member of society. I've discovered I'm quite the clothes horse, a fancy wool overcoat, a green vintage army jacket, a leather biker jacket, whatever I feel like tossing on that day. Hats, different shoes, various different pants. The point I'm making is I do not look like my fail mart alter ego when I'm out and about. I wear a black ball cap, a black faux military coat, and a name tag. I wear this day in and day out, but never in my civilian life. With the addition of the mask, it's difficult for the customers to recognize me. However, big snowstorm heading into my area forecasting a foot of snow and sub-zero temperatures, I decide to forego shopping at my home store and head off to another superstore in the area in search of propane, ice melt, batteries, the usual prepper stuff I try to lay in when it's possible I'm going to be snowed in for a few days. Got my cart, listening to the in-store music, playing the same tired 70s and 80s inoffensive fluff they always do, and it happens. I pause to grab a bottle of hot sauce in the much-feared call of the entitled customer, Hey, hey you! Nope, not me. Can't be calling for me. I'm in a wool coat and a stylish Stetson. I'm not working. Whistle. Ah, crap, she actually whistled at me. I turn with dread and, yep, there she is, one of my fail mark customers and one of the more infamous ones to boot. Let me describe this woman. She's basically spherical, a screwed up angry face, beady eyes, and has a habit of wearing stained sweats no matter what the weather. She comes into fail mart and demands an electric cart and will get extremely huffy if none are available. I have run my butt ragged trying to meet her demands and never get a thank you. Her daughter once stole someone's cart for her from the bathroom area, but that's a story for another thread. So she's straining the store's electric cart, leaning over the handlebars and glaring at me. For once, her devil spawn are not with her. Took you damned long enough. Give me a 40-pound bag of rock salt now. I want to get home before the snow. Now, since I have a lot of time to think at Failmart, I sometimes amuse myself by making up little songs, anything to make myself giggle and keep my mind off my soul-sucking job. I glare at the woman, take a deep breath, then off to the race as we go. To the tune of the Oogie Boogie song from Nightmare Before Christmas. You're joking, you're joking, I can't believe my ears. You're joking, you're joking, you think that I work here? Look at me, dear lady, tell me what you see. I've got no damn name tag, so please just let me be. I start doing a soft shoe dance in my boots, slowly turning about, arms akimbo, showing off my non-fail mart attire. She's now staring at me like I've suddenly grown an extra head, and it's making googly faces at her. I don't know why you're thinking that I'll help all that I can, but for now, between you and me, I'm not the fail mart man. I grab my cart, spin it around like it's Ginger Rogers, and skip off down the aisle singing, You're joking! You're joking! I glanced at a look over my shoulder right before I took the turn, and she was still sitting there, mouth agape. I couldn't stop grinning the rest of my trip. This really fits the old saw. If you can't dazzle them with brilliance, baffle them with bull. I would have paid to have seen your act. Take a bow. You are magnificent, OP. And our second story. 
Oh, I'm on private property? I used to work for a supermarket chain and quite often I'd be asked by management to work at other locations. Most of the time, this wasn't a big deal. I was happy to help out. It gave me an excuse to drive and have the petrol paid for. However, one day I was asked to work at a location very far away at a very early hour of the morning. I initially refused on the grounds that I would have to wake up at around 2 a.m. in order to have a shower, breakfast, and drive to be on site for 5 a.m. After some arm bending from management, I finally relented and begrudgingly agreed I would do it. Due to the drive not taking nearly as long as I initially expected, I arrived on location at about 4.30 a.m. I waited in my car with the music playing. At 4.50 a.m., I get a loud knock on the car window, nearly making me jump out of my skin. It was the manager for that store who, never seen me before, did not know who I was. The conversation went as follows. Manager, you need to leave. This is private property. Me. Oh, but... Manager, interrupting, I don't care. Go now. Me, quickly realizing I can play this to my advantage. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I don't want any problems. Of course, I'll go. Right away. Sorry. As per his request, I drove home with a smile on my face, knowing that I have the rest of the day free to myself. A few hours later, I get a phone call. I answer the unrecognized number, and I immediately recognize the voice. It was the manager who told me to leave. Manager, hello, I'm looking for OP. Me, hi, yeah, that's me. Manager, this is manager name calling from location. I was expecting you to work with me today. You should have been here for 5 a.m. Me, trying to sound casual. Yeah, I was there waiting in my car. You told me to leave, remember? Manager, but you didn't say that. Me interrupting. There are no ifs, ands, or buts. I was on private property and was asked to leave. I was legally obliged to do so. Manager, right, but don't you think... Me interrupting. It doesn't matter what I thought. I was asked to leave private property. I'm not going to break the law and risk getting in trouble with the police. It was at this point he hung up on me. I expected to get in trouble for what had happened, but I never heard anything more about it. This was a few years back now, too. It's one of my favorite stories to tell. I hope you enjoyed it. Edit. I was paid for petrol money and travel time. I was not paid for the shift. It was originally going to be a day off anyway. I suffered no financial losses whatsoever as a result of this. My local manager never spoke about this, and I never mentioned it to him. I did not suffer any disciplinary action. Yes, I did have to wake up early and lose out on sleep. Both of you understood trespassing, being in a business where you have to exercise it occasionally, and both of you chose to abuse it that day. Perfect symmetry. And our next story. Fake vegetarian on flight. I'm a cabin crew member, flight attendant. I've been doing it for over 10 years. Any issues that crop up during my workday, I'll bend over backwards to accommodate people if I can. However, there are unfortunately a handful of people that are dishonest to try and get what they want. Fake injuries to try and get upgraded, fake birthdays, you name it. Let me tell you about a fake vegetarian I had on board. He was flying an economy coach in the second from last row. He wanted the pasta option. I apologized and told him due to popular demand, we had ran out in the middle of the cabin, but we had the chicken option instead if he wanted that. Without skipping a beat, he said, I'm a vegetarian. Last time they brought me a meal from business class, so I'll just wait for that. Now, this is something I would have offered anyway as a nicety, if available, as I'm not too much of a jerk and I genuinely like helping people out if I can. After all, it's a 747, not 711 as the saying goes. Anyway, the way he just expected it right off the bat before I could even offer a solution left a slightly bad taste in my mouth, and I also smelled a rat. I was 99% sure that I had cleared in an empty packet of smoky bacon crisps from him earlier on, and no, they weren't a veggie brand, as I have the same ones occasionally. I was certain that he was being picky and wanted a higher quality meal. Plus, any regular flyer would know how often we run out of the veggie option and to pre-order a veggie meal. I said, it's unfortunate that you didn't pre-order a vegetarian meal. I'll see what I can do for you, though. Just give me five minutes to finish up here. Anyway, I went up to business class. They had also run out of the veggie option. So I went up to first class and asked if they could spare anything. We ended up putting a few leaves together with a bit of dressing. They spend thousands more up there and can dine at any time. So they didn't want me taking any of the hot veggie options in case someone wanted it later. Fair enough. Then I thought I could probably have some fun with this fake vegetarian. 
I brought it back down on a silver tray and held it above his eye line so he couldn't see what it was. I explained that unfortunately the vegetarian business class option had run out. Then he went to cut me off so he could complain, but I held my hand and said, however, I managed to go one step further and I got the last vegetarian meal from first class. Then I pulled the linen cloth off the top of the tray as I placed the salad down in front of him. It really was a very basic but large salad, and his face said it all. His face went from a smug, ha ha, I worked the system to WTF is that within two to three seconds flat. He then said, I wanted something hot. I'll just have the chicken then. I put on a shocked face and said, I cannot give you that, sir. I would feel awful. He responded with, don't worry about it. It's fine. I gave him an, are you sure you're vegetarian look and brought back the chicken, by which point it had sat up drying in the oven a little bit longer. Bon appetit. Just to say, even if he was a real vegetarian, he should have pre-ordered. Same goes for gluten-free, vegan, children's meal, diabetic, etc. And our last story. And our last story. Shady neighbor lost his house. Lived in a house where the detached garage had been turned into an apartment. It was the end of the driveway, slightly behind our house. One of the people who lived there was a complete jerk. Even ran a car repair business out of the apartment, illegal for so many reasons. His customers would park on our front lawn in front of the house, facing the wrong way, play loud music enough to rattle our windows. I let our landlord know, but every time he came over, the visitors would scatter. The best was when Paul decided he was going to paint an entire car using spray paint. Cast. Neighbor, entitled car guy, Paul. Landlord, LL. My family, me. Me. Hi, could I ask you not to use spray paint or smoke under our windows, please? Maybe turn down the base? Paul. LL said I could work on my car here. The driveway's mine. LL said so. Me. Thinking your car, maybe? Not half the neighborhood. Well, okay, but I'm serious about the fumes. My mom's on oxygen. Paul. Whatever. He walks away, muttering and calling me names. A few days later, a husk of a car, no interior or engine, flat tires, shows up in the front yard. Of course, the smoking and yelling by our windows has increased. I call to report an abandoned vehicle in my yard. It goes by. 3 a.m., Paul is pounding on my back door. Me. Who is it? Paul. B, where's my effing car? Me. I've notified the police and have a firearm to defend my family and my home. Leave. Nothing more the rest of the night. Next day, our storm door is broken, our front hose cut, and several plants have used motor oil in them. I call LL again. This time, LL has had enough. Tells Paul to get out, month to month, can hear this through the windows. Paul. You gonna believe that B? LL. I believe the tenants who have lived here 10 years with zero problems. Paul. She pulled a gun on me. LL. You have 30 days. LL knocks on the door. Did you pull a gun? Me. Nope. Just said I had one. Paul has a month as required by law. Gone by the end of the week. I hope he leaves without causing any drama for you. But somehow I doubt he will, judging from his past behaviors. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.